standard time, and then 7.30 Pacific standard, Pacific standard, Pacific standard time. I recommend, I always add, I have a name chat, name on chat, I'll have a chat, and chat, QT, QT, chat, etc. It's amazing how it's told about this and this and uh, this stuff. It's a little more to connect on, connect with people, and it's pretty quick. And thanks to that, that's what we're handling. <laughs> I'm Sarah, I uh, teach in the sixth grade, so I'm studying the digital school in Massachusetts, Innovation Academy Charter School. Um, and I should well, I should teach here, because here, I'll teach all these for mobile classrooms, and it's in the Ukraine, and I mean, and I've done a lot of time, um, and that, that fellowship, I started blogging um, about global education, and so I have a blog about global education. Um, it's a and, and um, I'm really interested in particular. Um, um, I did a presentation on the program, was asked to do a presentation on it um, for another thing on international collaboration. And feel like I, even though I have done a lot of traveling and global education, I feel like one of the pieces that I really want to do more of is actually like. The relationships and doing like relationship of problem and, and that international collaboration is hard to do when you have a lot of students. Um, like actually getting both the right back to kind of have a letter or just like things like that. Like I've yeah. tried, but I haven't really had as much success as I would like. So I am a New York City high school teacher. Um, we just want to program for um, updating the technology in our house building so I just want to see you kind of like back to the school. Sure. Uh, my name is John. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 
years. Mm-hmm. I'll worry about the rest of it. You know, because there's no future. There's only a couple of years, and mm-hmm. there's no future after that. Uh, so community-wise and priority-wise, what, they, what challenges are you facing? Because I know that community is a huge part of that and that, that mm-hmm. mindset. So what are y'all facing as far as what challenges are being your school? What are you facing? Are you facing any of these same challenges? I don't know. I'm still going to start working for the school district, but we are facing budget crunches all the time. So that's a challenge everywhere now. Because they've been used to having all kinds of stuff and now it's going to be that bad. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. So right. it's unfortunate that uh, you know, education is being cut everywhere. So there's no help in New Jersey or Arkansas to make an issue. That shouldn't be. Yeah. I don't appreciate the work on this for me. Yeah. That's um, I have a lot of budget issues and the different education need. One of our biggest challenges are the design ones. Because they're going to go outside, they don't have a lot of that kind of knowledge or hard knowledge in order to use things because they can't really walk outside of their home. So on top of teaching them every day and trying to make sure that they become you know, a well rounded individual, they don't see them see these other thoughts standing up there every day too. So it's like we're things are over trying all the time. Yes. Yeah. And this is not really a whole job. We only have reinforced what we are sharing with them. So you don't have that video. Or they are not better than us. Yeah. Right. And and I mean I have been charged school so it's it's um Blessed of all these to have a little bit more than you know, it's not on public schools. And we're just in this room. It's going to be around some of this stuff. We're going to talk about how we're going to do it well. It's important on the road, which is the problem. I think it's great to have a lot of things. What we need to do is to figure out what we're going to do. We're going to do a lot of things. Education is not one of these problems. We're going to do a lot of things. We have to stay in the of the education is not a priority, but it's not.
I'll go, okay, here's my ten minutes, here's my fill, here's what I want you to do, now do it. I have a five minute rule of, um, if you have a question for me, you see if you can figure out the answer. If you can't in about three minutes, ask your neighbor. If your neighbor doesn't know, then let me know and I'll either show you how to find the answer or if you know, I can't do that pretty quickly, then I'll show you how to do it. Then I'll essentially erase all that or go back to where you're going to do that now. Okay, so it's either you find the answer, let me know, so they have to explain it to me, so I'll know that they understood that, that the comprehension was there. Um, and that lets them own their learning. Um, if they have questions about what we're doing, they get finished, you know, they get to own where they are going with this lesson. Yes, I'm teaching my standards, but they're really not regurgitating to me this information, because I don't want that. Okay, so how did we do all this on a shoestring budget? Okay, Huntsville, our home district, which I'm a graduate of Huntsville High, I mean, there was no way they were going to give all that money to St. Paul schools. Now we're 88% green reduced lunch, but as you know, NSLA funds can be spread out across the district, so they don't necessarily have to give them all to us if they don't want to. Um, so <laughs> we reallocated some funds, for example, we were doing after school detention. Well, that one wasn't working out for us because no people that had detention had anybody to pick them up. So they usually end up not showing up for detention because they drive the bus home. And then we paid a lady $20, sit there with no kids, and then kids were getting put in ISS. That was not working. So that was $20 a day we saved. Okay, we did some other things about moving personnel around. Uh, somebody left, I didn't rehire them. Anybody? Um, I wrote grants. We got to receive a Title I turn back grant, which in Arkansas was just some people, and I don't know why, but they don't apply for grants. So Title I had some more money, and I don't know, a lot of you, if you're in affluent areas, you don't have Title I, but they, they didn't apply for the money, so there was extra money. So I applied for the grant, and it was like $6,000. And then they came back to me and said, hey, nobody applied, so instead of $6,000, we're awarding you $50,000. So I said, hey, I love it. Awesome. So, so that's really what gave us our boost to get all the stuff that we could right there in the beginning. Okay? I don't know how many of you guys have a 21st century <coughs> program at your school. If you don't and you have, like, like you're talking about, that's an after-school program. Do I have Twenty First Century Community Learning Center. It is an amazing program. So we just set in our thousand dollar program that we've got at our little tiny school, the five year grant, and it provides for after school programs which are ridiculously powerful. And all research shows and Arnie Duncan has repeatedly said that that's where we're going. So I would encourage you to look into that for your school and for any probably anything. If you have, it was, no, it was a monster to write the grant, but it's very worth it. And very smaller corporate grants, and here's what I want to say about that, you know, Target has filter grants, Walmart has all these other grants, and I know you guys, maybe, maybe it's a little bit of a pain to write for them or whatever, but you'll get them. If you write for them, you will get them. I mean, one out of two, I get it. And every, if really, if every teacher would write one to five grants per school year, just for the classroom, just for maybe a, a scholarship or a grant for the stock market game, or for you know, for something small, it could be, it could be, you know, a twenty dollar pet. It's worth it. You know, it, I mean, it's worth it. I can be, I can be doing my grad school work at night and then looking at my Twitter and writing a grant. I mean, it, it's easy and it's worth it because. I mean, like you get, you can get seven hundred dollars from Target like that to go on a field trip. And you know what? If the field trip only costs a hundred dollars, you can use the other six hundred for classroom supplies. That's a pretty good deal. Okay, so there's tons of things out there, and start, you know, start small. I mean, start with anything. Start with anything that you think I'm going to try this just to kind of get your feet wet if you haven't ever tried this before, because 
I know for me it's kind of scary to just like start writing grants and and she obviously pushes me and goes, you need to, you know, you need to be doing this, this is, you know, you really need to start this. Um, so start small but start somewhere. I just always think about all the kids that are going to get a benefit from it. You know, if I'm not doing it, no one else is going to be doing it and that kid is going to go home in the afternoon, doesn't have any food, doesn't have anybody to to take care of them, and often their friends will lock them out of the house, so they'll sit out in the cold. Okay, so otherwise he could be in our after school program, getting fed, getting teachers there supporting him, and getting exercise as well. Getting attention, I mean, I'm, I know, you know, I really feel like that's, that's one of the major keys is, am I giving you attention? Because so many of our students think, any attention is good attention. It can be negative attention. It doesn't really matter. Attention is attention because I'm not getting it anywhere else. Where are you guys getting your money for all of your tech stuff and different things like that? The money that we get comes from our comes from our county, um, but because of running into the situation where we're only going to um, this, this way. And it's not what we envision the student like we don't find that that's going to work with mm -hmm. even with our that. model right. um, we are turning towards grants mm -hmm. uh, etc in order to, to get that funding we, we wrote grants years ago in order to get the computers that we're still right. trying yeah. to, to limp along and I'll, I'll say this it. as you far know, as like funding at your at your district level I mean, I, I have to find and scrap to get us stuff, and I will go up there and I'll say, this is ridiculous. You know, you're, we're not getting our stuff so you get. I and will do that, and that is just fine. And I'm going to keep doing that because our kids deserve it. And I mean, it's just, even with my lab, like, there was, we had some issues. <laughs> they really didn't want me to have a math lab, and, and even what, it wasn't exactly what I would have ordered had I been the person ordering. You know what I mean? It wasn't. It, it wasn't exactly to to what I was doing, and that you know that that is that. If you're not the person ordering that, or if you don't have that finalization, now was 90 percent of it. Yes, it was. It was just that other 10 percent of a little bit of tweaking that would have you know. Um, and I don't know. There's not. A, there's not a good fix for that one. <laughs> okay, so. This is really a question that I would like to pose to you guys because this is something that I think is really important. And this is our this is supposed to be Miss Miss e right there. That's her little character. <laughs> one of our students did that. Yeah. Let me tell you first of all, we asked one of our students to do it first, and she had on booty shorts and like a little. I wasn't. I was well covered. covered. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, I said I'm in bikinis that were bigger. <laughs> I said, come on, guys, you gotta be better. <laughs> So, how are you guys doing this? Because I think this is what is so key. You know, we can't just throw technology at it and say this is going to fix us. Because there's a million things out there. There's there's a million ways to do this, but what's working for you? Or what have you tried that's working for you, maybe? Back there, do you, what do you guys think back there? Um, well, in the church school, we're in our second year, so we do have some grant money, so they uh, send us to uh, conferences like this mm -hmm. to um, not only network but also pick up some uh, tools and and how to use them I guess too. Um, I as a hobby of mine and I connect with this a lot. I, I like to play video games and you're a gamer. I, I'm a gamer. Our kids I'm love you. I'm a fisherman. <laughs> I uh, I used to ski. I like to be outside the best country ski and I um, and so I ice fish too. And so all these kids, I like, connect to their interests, and by connecting to their interests, I can learn from them. So when they come across new technologies, um, whether it's an app with a new camera and they're out on the ice, you know, I can walk over and I can hang out with them on the ice on the weekends, and we are using new technology and they're teaching me how to use it. Um, so not necessarily feel like I have to learn on my own and use uh, whether it's YouTube videos or coming to a conference. The kids are very smart, especially if they're passionate about it. So yeah. They can teach me 
being able to use them. How, how do you get that? How do you get that teacher that's been there or doesn't want to do that? How do you how do you do that? How do you do that? We try. I mean, you know, there's teachers at our school that have been there twenty some, thirty some years. And, we just don't want to integrate the technology and they're used to their way and we try to do training programs and give them simple things to do. But that's really a struggle. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. Yes. I think it, it's a struggle a lot of times because the teachers aren't educated enough on how to use it. So networking is very important, going to conferences, staying up to date, and listening to your kids can help you do that. A lot of times with schools, they give you an iPad and say, here, use yes. it, but they don't show you how to incorporate it within your lesson. And I think in integrating technology is more than a device. It has to be based on what your students are getting out of it. So I think there's a fine line between people who know that and people who are just, I want iPads, I want notes, but what are you actually doing with them? Exactly. What student success is being what, what are you getting from them from it? Is it just they're yeah. sitting quietly with a device or are they learning? And I think a lot of schools don't prepare teachers enough to know the difference. And I think, and we'll talk about this later too, there's no accountability for that. I think a huge thing also is to break that paradigm that you can't learn from your students. I think if, if our season's teachers could just realize that these, their students, have the power to do whatever you want to, them to do. And if you just say, hey, can somebody operate this? Does anyone know how to log on? The kids would I'd feel so empowered, and they, they love that. Exactly. And if we could just get them to accept that they don't have to know everything before the students, that they can learn from the students, it would be a lot easier. Yes. Well, I mean, such a minute, you know, let what, your, what's your students sit down at your computer. Let, your, you know, let them know. It's not hush hush. Let them, you know, this is not government secrets. You're using the same software that they are. Let them, you know, let them know what you're doing. And sometimes I just do it to end it. I think oh, that the way that we have done it is, you know, Miss Eaton is she's gonna she has one period a day where she's our technology integration person, which is not enough at all, but it's something, you know. And she it's more than anyone else in the district has. Yes. But we also do more technology than anybody else in our district. And so she goes and will model lessons and will work with teachers. And I think the reason that that works is because they still consider her a peer because she teaches and does that. Whereas she's not a tech girl. Yeah, and so many people, I've, you know, I've had them in class. So they're, they almost see me as a student still in some ways. Yes. Um, the integration of our building. I, I work with a colleague of mine, and, and, and I guess I'm more behind the scenes. He's the one who goes to these different conferences and presents the stuff, but I help him work on it. And if you want, you can Google 1660. 1660 is a is a, an hour-type workshop that shows you 60 different free programs that teachers can utilize within a classroom for various activities. And it, and it varies from elementary, middle, through high school. And there's a lot of different, again, free stuff out there to be used. Yeah. Yes. Um, one of the things that I find is that, um, you know, you're talking about the different pieces of technology, and I'd love to know where others are in this. Um, most of my students, um, if it is not on the phone, they really, there are actually huge gaps in their <coughs> knowledge and their functionality between a laptop of most kinds and a phone. If it is on their phone, the kids know how to use it, to operate, to work with it, to um, to really communicate, etc. And I think right now, if you change the format from the mobile format to a laptop, I lose a third to a half of them. Because oh. they just yeah. can't, oh, hello. That is whether it's physically <laughs> manipulate or yes. just like it's it's not an interface that they really understand. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, and fortunately, the base schools in my county are very, very strict on cell phone use. We yeah. have a much different idea. And my policy is if it pertains to what we're doing here, Please use it. I don't care if you use it for notes, for searching, for adding, for whatever you're doing. 
right along with the lesson perfectly fine. Now, if you're just texting with friends, please do not be upset when I say quit the text. You know, or if you're playing games, quit the games. But if you're taking notes, if you're, oh yeah, Miss Hogg, it's this, it's that, it's the other, great, that's what you're supposed to do. But I'm finding it, it's kind of hard because I interface with my laptop, and yet they're on a phone, so it's almost a disconnect for me. And, and, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure how do I jump to that phone format in the classroom so that I'm kind of looking at that with them real time with whatever they're doing because they're not making that jump. Well, maybe then the, maybe then the tablet becomes the intermediary that mm -hmm. crosses mm -hmm. that yeah. boundary of, mm -hmm. you know, it's larger, it's an easier format. Right. Than and I do have kids phone. who are using their iPads right. because they I think that's the middle ground. You know, because yeah. It's got the pow a little bit more power, it's a little easier to visualize and manipulate, mm -hmm. um, and it's not as you know, cumbersome as the laptop, so that, that's probably the middle ground. Okay. Interesting. So just accountability, just making everyone accountable, uh, and choosing your, your device, you know, choose, choose what device, what app, what works, you know, 60 tools, 60 minutes, that's great, but let's start with where are we going to incorporate math, science, English, CTE, let's incorporate one thing, let's do it well, let's not throw a million things at our kids, okay, yes, can they handle it? Probably so, but you know, let's get them comfortable. Let's do let's do this more than once so they know how to use this afterwards. How you know, let's not just do the do this once and, and forget about it. At least let them get decent at this before we move on to something else. And as far as accountability, what we did was we um, as a as a group, as a faculty, when we came back before we started the school year with the iPads, with all the new technology. We got together and talked about our rubric for our lesson plans, and that, that was really something we needed to look at, putting technology piece into that. So now our lesson plans have a technology integration piece on them. So they're required to weekly, at least, at least minimally weekly, have a technology integration piece. And so I religiously go through the lesson plans, look at them. I do walkthroughs and check and make sure everybody's doing that. And because we did it as a group, they hold each other accountable. And it makes everyone really actually utilize me more because um, they have to make sure that whatever they're thinking in their mind, that, they're, that we're capable of doing, or what the best interface is for them. Is it the iPhone? Is it the iPad? Is it, is it the Netflix? Is it the MacBook? What do I need to get from you to be able to do this? How, how can I do this? And so it is easier for me to say, okay, well, let's kind of choose maybe this tool. And a lot of that is in some ways up to me to, to be able to do that. Um, we just put different apps, which is yeah, obviously a dollar all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, student voice, student choice. Okay, so one thing that we do at our school, and this is something that I do, and all my teachers have kind of followed suit. I have an open door policy for all my kids. I'm available at any time for them to come talk to me. If I'm in the middle of a meeting, if I'm doing something, it doesn't matter. If a kid needs me, they can come into my office. Okay? My teachers are the same way. Like, we're there for the kids first. Everything that we do is about what's best for kids. So, who cares if I've got a report that's due in our central office that afternoon? It can wait if a kid needs me. And our kids all know that. And that's something about building genuine relationships. And you have to invest time to build genuine relationships. This doesn't happen between 8 and 3 30. This happens between 7 30 and midnight because you're at the ball game or because you're here, there, that type of thing. And it, it really has to be something where you listen to your students and they understand genuinely that you want them to do well and that you're willing to do something. Something happened like this past week. Um, accelerated reader. Are you guys familiar with Accelerated Reader, a reading program where they read, they get points, blah, blah, blah. Well, they, can, they kind of call me like the Accelerated Reader Mossy because I make everybody do it. And, and, and we do it second grade through 12th grade. And if they don't get their points, they go to detention, period. And so I'm not saying yours are like unfair. 
someone can bring my food to me. So I'll sit here. But they all wrote these art they all wrote these persuasive essays in English class to get me to change my mind about it. So that they were really good essays. So I'm giving I, I said, okay, you guys wrote these really good essays. I think you made points. So for this nine weeks, we're gonna see what happens. See if you get your points. I'm gonna compare your grades this nine weeks to last nine weeks. And if they're no no worse, then we're gonna do it your way. We did it my way the first semester and it worked really good. But I'm gonna let you have your voice here and do it this way. So that's just something I don't mind, you know, I don't mind listening to them. If they have valid points, they have valid points. Sometimes kids are right. You know, and I don't that's something we have to do. Or obviously, you know, with the no excuses, no limits, that's the thing that we say every single day. Our kids say it with us, and it's because they actually, they remember what they know, they, and sometimes it's like, no oh, excuses, no limit. But they really say it. They know. It's, it's in the back of their mind. And so if it's in the back of their mind, you know what, maybe, maybe, that, maybe that clicks at some point. Um, student advisory. In our student advisory, I had 11th graders last year, so this year I've got my seniors. And I, I have a relationship with all of them. Sometimes it's a, you know, I had one of my boys come in, he was crying, I was like, you want me to stay, you want me to go? He's like, I want you to go. Left him in my room for 20 minutes, he was fine, it took him two days to come talk to me about it. But I knew, you know what I mean? I knew at some point he would. So it's like building that genuine relationship with every single student, know where they're coming from, know what their home life is, and know that they'll come to you. Know that you have an open door policy. From the time I walk in to the time I walk out, you have access to me. Most of the time, you've got access to me otherwise. Um, I haven't checked in with my kids today. One's in a meeting, one's sick, you know, and I'll, I'll check in with all of those students because but this is they daily, need to do this that. This is a daily period of academic time. So they're going to be doing some type of academic thing. They're going to be doing something that's going to be related to what they want to do. Like the, we have the Seven Habits book up there. We do that a lot with, like, you know, our ninth graders. That's something that we really try to do there. But we always work with them, and then the same advisors have them all the way through. And then just college and career rate, obviously that's more with my, um, you know, junior seniors. When you know, when we when we really hit home with that, um, and just empowering our kids with with that relationship, one relationship at a time, because that's what it really takes. You know, believing in that that empowerment. Are you creating a, an atmosphere for success? That's something you have to sit back and think. You know, are you as an educator, are you doing that? For example, are you making graduation possible? Last year we had a senior that was a credit and a half short, and it was district policy that we were not gonna we were not gonna let people do credit recovery. So this kid is gonna drop it out. Okay? So I just decided we were gonna do it at, after all. So he came in before school at 7 a.m. And he ended up graduating because you know what? Everyone doesn't follow the yellow brick road. There's different weaves and bobs and things they have to do. But in the end, everything we have to do has to go back to what's best for kids. And that's going to be individualized. And I think that's something we're lucky that we're in a small school that we can do that, even though we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but we're able to do that. Okay? Since we are so into technology, and I'm sure you guys probably struggle with this, digital footprint, teaching people what's okay and what's not okay. And our biggest issue sometimes is the teachers. I don't know if you guys struggle with that or not, but we do. So, um, In our school system, this may actually be um, a question for tech integration. Mm -hmm. um, the teachers are not given any kind of administrative access at all to the laptops or anything of the sort. Right. And um, so it does become a constant, I mean, almost to the point of nagging, talking about the digital footprint and the students. What you don't realize, if you are streaming video, you're leaving you know, the digital trash. And I can't even, I can't clean anything on any of the laptops that I have other than my own without it going through, you know, a, a ticket and then it's three days later and, yeah. you know, trying to just do regular maintenance. Yeah. How is it, and I guess in, in other people's schools, we have, we have a be contract to do maintenance. Yeah, so like teachers can sign this really detailed contract mm -hmm. to get administrative rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it basically says, you know, 
you signed the lock away. <laughs> and then so. EDs are, you know, it's still, it is up coming through me because I am the person on campus, so I break as well. Mm -hmm. It is a lot to juggle and, you know, but for the most part, I have a 24 hour policy, I'll get back to you in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a, a one day call, I have a 24 to 48 hour policy on anything um, elementary, if I have to go get the cart and download me anything. Um, I've got a great synchronization um, set up. We're looking at different software because we're about to add 30 more iPads, 30, 40, uh, and um, it's just, it's finding that one person that they'll allow, maybe per school, mm -hmm. possibly, just to speed up the process because they're not going to, you know, give, because I have a few more rights than even they're, they're letting the teachers have. Not many, but mm -hmm. a lot. to do basic maintenance because yes. Some, yes. Of, some of the kids, even though, we do talk about what a digital footprint is, and not only for your own privacy and protection, but as well as for the long-term operation of, of the machines. And for some, it sinks in, but you know there are perennially those that just don't. Yeah, they, they just they don't, don't get right. it. Right, and they, and they don't understand that. And then when your teachers don't understand it to begin with, um, then that's that's an even harder thing to, to work with because they don't know how to even show them how they would do that in that case. Mm -hmm. Well, we're running out of time, so we're going to click the back to the end here. Yeah, sorry, we missed it now. Um, we're doing lots of stuff in our community. We have community courses that we offer at nighttime for all kinds of different things. Lots of collaboration. And we always go back to um, relationships. I mean, I think that that's that's the one thing for me that um, I know my kids, and they'll they'll come to me, and you know they're they feel comfortable enough with me saying that did or did not work. Um, that you know they they have that, and I feel I feel comfortable learning from them. I feel comfortable sitting back at my desk pretending that I'm not paying attention to them for ten minutes and seeing what what they're doing, so I can incorporate that. You know, like I have one gamer who. It's a struggle for me because I'm not one, but it is what it is. So, so. Um, please follow us, email us, just give us thoughts, give us any suggestions. Direct message us on Twitter, we'll send you the whole presentation and put in some of the notes of things that you guys said. Okay, thanks for coming. Thank you. And if anyone would like any.